In this video, I'll show you how to add a text element to each image for your Cargo Collective image gallery. Uh, you can change its shape, uh, color or text, of course, and also you can change its placement. Uh, I put it to the top right corner, but it doesn't matter. You can uh, control it however you want. Uh, maybe I won't cover only one case here when it's placed at the, uh, in the middle, but maybe I'll make another video dedicated to this particular situation. Uh, but in this one, uh, I'm not going to cover it. So, uh, and also at the end of the video, I'll show you how to add this shaking animation. So you can decide uh, if you want to add it or not. And we will restrict uh, hover effect for mobile devices to prevent some issues. And let's start. Just in case you don't know how to create image galleries, you need to select your images and then press gallery icon. Here we have several options for different layouts and each of them requires some changes that uh, you need to add to your code. I'm going to be working with this particular layout, but at the end of the video, I'll show you uh, what changed and what exactly you need to adjust to use any other layouts. But yeah, I'm not going to cover each situation in this video. I hope you will manage yourself. Okay. Uh, Go to your code view and to find your image gallery, you need to look for something like that. Our image gallery always starts with a div tag with class image gallery and also it ends with a div tag. So the problem uh, when we work with image galleries, we cannot just add custom classes here and we cannot wrap elements into new tags because after saving, when we go back, we won't see any changes. Cargo removes uh, any custom elements inside of image galleries. That's why they are a little different from other elements. But the solution here is to wrap it into a new div tag. This is the beginning of the tag and this is how we close the tag. Okay, and here you need to add a class. You can call it however you want. I'm going to call it my gallery like that. Just don't use numbers or symbols. Okay, this is all about HTML part and then go to CSS. This is our CSS editor. I'm going to add some room just to make it a little bit more clean. You don't need to do that. And we need to define our selector first. It's going to be really complex fun. First type dot my gallery or any other word that you used for your custom class. Second part is gallery card nth child 1n. Next part, I'm going to move it a little bit. Next part is gallery card image and before like that an open curvy brace and it's going to be closed automatically. So finally it looks like that inside. Let's say content content here. I'm going to use a random word. We're going to change it. Hello, like that. So now you see that above each image of our gallery, we see word hello. But if you won't see this word, that means that you made a mistake in this line. So just check it once again. And this is like a first debugging. Okay. I'm talking about style of this text. Uh, it's going to inherit uh, all styles from body copy style uh, of this page where your gallery is placed. That's how you can control it. But also you can change it right here. That's what I want to do. Font family, Arial. Like that. And font size. 28 pixels, line height, 32 pixels, and color, black. And I also recommend you do not use pixels here, but use viewport widths, like that, viewport widths. That's how we can make this text to be smaller on smaller devices and larger on larger devices. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more flexible. And also this value is, uh, and we need to redefine it using viewport widths as well. Three viewport widths, something like that. Okay. This part is ready, but you can also use pixels. Uh, just change the size of your browser and you will see uh, how it changed. Okay. 
This is our text styling. And to move it inside of this box, you need to use position absolute. Now it's placed on the top left corner. You can use four properties to control it. Uh, top or bottom, left or right. Use just one of them. Let's say top 10 pixels. And if I change this value, you see that our text moves. And if this value is negative, it goes out of our box. Uh, yeah, in my case, I'm gonna use uh, this value. Okay, and right, minus 27 pixels. You also can use left, just do not use both of them. Like use right or left, top or bottom. That's how you can place this text in any position inside of this box. Okay, and um, you can also use percents here instead of pixels. What else? Uh, let's add background color. Light blue. You also can control it using cargo panels. It's okay. And also you can add hexadecimal number here. To add some space around this uh, text, you need to use um, padding. 10 pixels, 30 pixels. First value controls uh, top and bottom paddings and second value controls left and right padding. That's how it works. Also, instead of pixels, you also can use viewport width. I recommend you to use the same um, measure everywhere. If you use pixels, just use pixels everywhere. If you use viewport width, use viewport width. But also you can check it uh, scaling your browser and see how it looks. Okay. Mm, padding re is ready. Let's add border radius. Border radius. 50 pixels. And you can add border as well. One pixel, solid, black. That's how to add borders, but I'm not gonna do that. And maybe I'm gonna change this value to something else because it's too large like that okay and uh, yeah this part is ready in this part we will be changing texts for images let's copy the first selector paste it somewhere below and don't forget to close your curvy brace and change this value one n into one this is how we will affect our first image. Let's change content to something else. Uh, let's say first image. First image. You see that now nothing changed, but if you refresh your website, just open it in a new tab and see how it looks. Now we see the correct value. I'll show you why it happened. Uh, copy this part paste it here, change uh, first to second, and then change one to two. And now you see that this one is like second image. But once again, if you go to your website and refresh your page, you will see that they have correct numbers. Why it happened? So uh, I think that this part is our editor mode and it has slightly different HTML from what we see as a result. That's why it doesn't uh, show us correct cards. So to control your cards, just refresh your page, just open your website in a new tab and refresh it and see how it looks. Because here you won't see the correct values. And also if you use one, two, three, like third image, these selectors, you will be uh, affecting first image, second image, and third image, etc. And if you uh, will move your projects or images, these parts, I mean, this uh, text will affect them 
um, the same way, like it won't uh, be attached to each image, it will be attached to just a position. So this will be always for the first image, that, that will be for the second image, etc. So when you move your projects inside of your gallery, you also need to change these values all the time. Okay, and last one, our fourth image. Okay, the sec uh, last one uh, is still hello, but when I refresh our website, everything is correct. And in this part, probably I should say that if you change the layout, let me show you, uh, if you change these settings, you can see absolutely different effects. So in this case, you see first image, first image, second image, second image. <laughs> Here is our basic situation that it starts from the second one. Here the same. And here is also the same. And the last gallery, well, I see only three images, but I think that one of them is just hidden beneath of one of these images. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, to adjust this code to your situation, you just need to choose right selectors. And to choose them, do not look at this preview. Just refresh your page and you will see whether it affects correct images or not. So that's how you can deal with different layouts. And also, uh, let's change background colors. Background color. Well, honestly, I'm going to just copy this part and change. The mind flow is that you won't be able to see uh, your colors here because the, like the correct colors, because this color is going to be shown for this image and um, it's hard to check how it looks. You need to refresh your page all the time. This is slightly annoying, but uh, I wasn't able to find any better solution. So, okay. And the last is for green image. I think this one. And then let's check. Okay, now it looks correct. This part is ready and then let's add a hover state. All right, to add a hover state, first of all, let's hide these images here using opacity zero. Now we cannot see them. Then copy your first selector like that. Don't forget to close curvy brace and add one more thing after NTH child, add hover like that. And inside, we need to say opacity one. And now when I hover over each image, I see our, my text. And how to make it appears not instantly, but slowly, add transition to your normal state. Transition, transition, let's say 1.3 seconds. And copy this transition for your hover state. Now, you see the difference and let me refresh my page to show you how it works. Yeah, this is our hover effect. Before we start working with animation, let's restrict hover for our mobile devices because, you know, mobile phones don't have hover. Uh, they can trigger hover uh, on tap, but it's not correct way how to do that. So I recommend you uh, just to remove hover state from mobile devices. You need to type media screen and max width 770 pixels this is a cargo breakpoint so all devices that goes under this value are mobile devices and inside of this curvy braces you need to paste our first selector copy uh, we can copy like like that and don't forget to close your curvy brace because you uh, you need to have two curvy braces one of them close this part and another one for this part this is a common mistake and yeah you just need to check it okay and here if you want to remove it completely say display none and now if i hover 
over these images, I won't see any text. But if you want to make it visible, you can say opacity 1. And also you can move it. You can just copy all this property and change them for mobile devices only. And it won't affect our desktop version. Everything is ready and the last step is to add animation. You will find the link below to this website. This is a W3 school and they have an example of shaking animation. Go to this part with example and first copy keyframes. Uh, I'm gonna paste them somewhere here. Uh, then go back and copy the rest of the code. But do not copy all thing, copy only these two lines. Well, actually three lines, but I'm going to remove this one and then paste it to our hover state. Our hover state is this selector with opacity and transition. Just paste it here and you can remove this gray command like that. And now you see that it works. Also, uh, you can remove this line and then animation will work only one time not repeatedly and if you add this value this property with value infinite it will be working infinitely okay thank you for watching and follow my channel to get more tutorials about cargo collective goodbye